Director of the Maryland Primary Care Program, Dr. Howard Haft, uh, the President and CEO of the University of Maryland Medical System, Dr. Mohan Santha, and the President of the Health Facilities Association of Maryland, Joe Damatas. Uh, after vaccinating 70% of Maryland adults by Memorial Day, uh, months ahead of the goal set by President Biden, Maryland is incredibly on track to vaccinate 80 percent of all adults by Labor Day. As of today, 79.5 percent of all Marylanders age 18 and older have vaccinated 94 percent of all Marylanders 65 and older. I want to just take a moment to thank uh, the millions of Marylanders who have gotten vaccinated. Our daily vaccination rate has increased by 20 percent over the past month. And we recently hit our highest single day of vaccination since July 1st. Uh, as one of the nation's uh, most vaccinated states, uh, both our case rate and our positivity rate are among the lowest in America. And we are much better prepared to withstand the significant summer surge of the Delta variant, which many other states uh, with lower vaccination rates are now experiencing. Florida and Texas currently account for 40 percent of all new COVID hospitalizations in America. Uh, Florida alone has had more new cases in the past week, uh, more than 30 states combined. Here in Maryland, our hospitalizations are down 70 percent below their peak and well within our capacities. And we remain far below any of the three pandemic tr triggers in our protocols. Currently, less than 9 percent of our hospitalizations are COVID-related. Uh, however, the Delta variant does pose a significant threat to those Marylanders who remain unvaccinated. The Delta variant continues to account for 100 percent of all new cases currently being sequenced in Maryland. The vaccines are, without a doubt, our single most effective tool to mitigate that threat. Uh, nearly everyone hospitalized or dying from COVID-19 in Maryland is unvaccinated. Uh, the vaccines are very safe, they're very effective, and they're completely free and widely available nearly everywhere in our state. To find a vaccine near you, please go to covidvax.maryland.gov or call 1-855-MD-GO-VAX, where our call center is available seven days a week. As we continue our efforts to get uh, the remaining Marylanders vaccinated, we have transitioned from a state of emergency into an ongoing long-term public health management response. Our main focus has always been and continues to be reducing hospitalizations and deaths, particularly among our most vulnerable Marylanders. Last spring, uh, all across the nation, nursing homes became ground zero in the fight against COVID-19. The, in the early, very first few days of the crisis, we immediately sat down with industry leaders to figure out what actions we should take. And Maryland became one of the first states in America to issue guidance to state nursing home facilities regarding instituting strict infection uh, control protocols and limiting staff travel. We further bolstered mitigation and suppression efforts at Maryland nursing homes, directing all staff who interacted with residents to wear personal protective equipment. We launched statewide strike teams, which became a model for the rest of the nation on how to bring triage, emergency care, supplies, and equipment to overburdened nursing homes. Uh, we were also one of the first states in America to require uh, universal testing for all nursing home residents and staff. Back in December, when vaccines were first approved, we immediately sent our first doses to nursing homes and hospitals. Now, Maryland became one of the first states in the nation to activate the federal long-term care vaccination program, prioritizing the staff and residents of our nursing homes, long-term care facilities, and assisted living facilities. We also took steps to provide full transparency to the public by launching a public data dashboard showing vaccination data for both residents and staff in each facility. 79% of all nursing home staff have already been vaccinated. 
and 18 facilities uh, are averaging 95 percent or higher. And these are the facilities uh, you'll see on the screen with the highest staff vaccination rates. And we want to take a moment to congratulate them uh, for their successful efforts. Uh, but these are the facilities with the lowest vaccination rates for staff. Uh, they average only 48.9 percent, uh, with the lowest one at 40 percent, which is unacceptable uh, and which is endangering the lives of nursing home residents. Our dashboard will continue to highlight on a weekly basis which facilities fall into these categories. We are concerned that the Delta variant surge has led to an increase in infections among staff uh, in nursing homes, which uh, has been a consistent source of outbreaks in these facilities throughout the pandemic. In response, today I am announcing that the Maryland Department of Health is immediately instituting new vaccination protocols for all the employees at our 227 nursing homes across the state. Every nursing home employee will be required to show proof, proof of vaccination. If they are unable to, they will be required to submit to regular ongoing COVID screening and testing. Uh, we will be redoubling our enforcement actions for nursing homes uh, that do not comply uh, with state health department protocols and or which persistently fail to report their vaccination data. We're also doubling the fines and stepping up civil pen penalties. While the state's largest hospital systems, including the University of Maryland Medical System, Johns Hopkins, uh, MedStar, GBMC Healthcare, and others, um, they've already led by example by mandating vaccines for all of their hospital staffs. But not every hospital has taken action, and some continue to have far too many unvaccinated healthcare workers needlessly exposing their vulnerable patients in hospitals to COVID-19 and the Delta variant. Eight full months after vaccines have been available to healthcare workers, this is simply not acceptable. Uh, so today we're also instituting uh, vaccination protocols for all staff working in all Maryland hospitals. These new requirements for both nursing home and hospital employees will take effect immediately. All these employees are required to get their first vaccine no later than September 1st. While the current data continues to show that the vaccines have held up extremely well against severe illness, hospitalization, and death, our public health team has, uh, for the last several months, been actively preparing a detailed plan for the potential utilization of third doses or boosters to further protect everyone who got vaccinated from the current and future variants of the virus. Uh, late last week, the FDA and CDC finally authorized states to begin providing a third vaccine dose to people who are immunocompromised. And uh, just this morning, federal health officials announced that boosters will be made more widely available beginning in late September. Uh, governors across the country have become increasingly frustrated with the confusing uh, messaging and conflicting guidance from the White House and federal government agencies regarding booster shots for the wider population. Uh, but rather than wait until the fall, uh, we believe that the federal government should make booster shots available immediately uh, for seniors and other vulnerable populations. Here in Maryland, in preparation for that, uh, we launched a new antibody testing program for nursing home residents all across the state in order to ascertain the, their current levels of immunity. This pilot program includes 500 residents of nursing homes from across Maryland, and it will provide us with critical data regarding the need for booster shots. Uh, this is one of a number of areas uh, where we are pressing the Biden administration for action. Uh, we're also pushing for full FDA approval of the vaccines as soon as possible. Uh, more than 4 million Marylanders and more than 200 million Americans have already gotten vaccinated. Clearly, the science shows that they're very safe and effective, uh, yet the lack of full approval uh, remains the most significant hurdle to reaching those who are still hesitant. Full approval would be a significant boost to our vaccine distribution operation. In addition, with more and more children heading back to school, 
We're also pushing federal officials to expedite approval so that 5 to 11-year-olds can begin receiving the vaccines. We're being told that this approval is still months away, uh, but that is simply not soon enough and not good enough. Uh, so we're going to keep pressing and we'll keep Marylanders informed on any progress that we're able to make with the White House and other federal officials. Monoclonal antibody therapy is a critical tool which Maryland already has readily available uh, to help us prevent severe illness, hospitalizations, and deaths. Now, this is the only approved and effective treatment for positive COVID individuals who are symptomatic uh, but not yet severe enough to require hospitalization. Thousands of Marylanders have already received monoclonal antibody therapy at dozens of hospitals and healthcare facilities all across the state, and it has helped us prevent hundreds of hospitalizations and deaths. Monoclonal antibodies have proven to be effective against the Delta variant, and state health officials are strongly recommending a much wider utilization of them for any patients with mild to moderate symptoms of COVID-19 before it progresses to a more serious illness. In a few moments, Dr. Howard Haft will uh, provide a further briefing on these treatments and resources which are now available all across Maryland. In the coming uh, days and weeks ahead, uh, we will continue to do what we has, have always done uh, since day one of this crisis. We will keep following the science and keep taking a measured, balanced, data-driven approach in our continuing successful efforts to respond to this pandemic. Our public health response, as I mentioned, has now evolved from the urgent uh, crisis state of emergency phase to now becoming a part of the ongoing day-to-day long-term response of our state health operations. And it remains the focus of all of our healthcare heroes who continue to sacrifice sleep, time with their families, and even their own personal safety uh, to save the lives of Marylanders. So to all of our healthcare heroes, I know uh, that many of you are completely exhausted uh, and stretched much too thin, and that in some ways uh, these surges feel like the worst kind of deja vu. We understand, and we feel exactly the same way. Uh, but please know that you have earned our eternal gratitude, and your courage and resilience continues to be an ins inspiration to me and to all the people of Maryland. So thank you for continuing to show us uh, what it means to be Maryland strong. With that, I'm going to turn the podium over to Joe D'Amatos, who, as I mentioned, is the president of the Health Facilities Association of Maryland. He's going to talk more about the importance of getting all nursing home staff fully vaccinated. Thank you, Governor. Thank you all so very much for being here. And thank you specifically, Governor Hogan, for mandating COVID-19 vaccinations for healthcare workers in Maryland hospitals and in skilled nursing and rehab centers. We are entering several challenging weeks of this COVID-19 surge. Following the experience of India and the United Kingdom in recent weeks, we know that this surge of the Delta variant and some breakthrough cases have the potential to be very severe. Governor, what you did today is very important because vaccination remains the single best tool to fight COVID-19, to avoid hospitalization, and to avoid death. Uh, Governor Hogan, your announcement today will save lives. Since you and I first met in the early days of the pandemic in March, uh, Governor Hogan's pattern of leadership uh, has actually been fairly consistent. First, Governor Hogan publicly considers. Then, sir, you recommend. And at times like these, when more and more lives are at risk, you rightfully mandate an order. You've been recommending for weeks now along with me, 
sharing your frustration on the low vaccination rates amongst some healthcare workers in nursing homes and in some hospitals. Today, Governor Hogan, you are doing the right thing by moving from recommendation to mandate and requirement. Let me be clear. I'm very proud of our sector specifically, and I'm proud of the Maryland Hospital Association and the stance it took on mandating and supporting the mandating of vaccines. And I'm proud that our American Healthcare Association and HFAM issued a public statement mandating and supporting vaccines. But we need to take that extra step. Today, Maryland's numbers are better than most across the country, both in terms of the general population and in terms of skilled nursing and rehab center patients, residents, and staff. As Governor Hogan said, 89% of our residents and patients are vaccinated. 79% on average of our staff are vaccinated. But still, we have much, much farther to go because in a handful of skilled nursing and rehab centers and in hospitals, we have staff vaccination rates closer to 40%. So while all employers in our sector have encouraged and provided opportunities for vaccination, there are employees in skilled nursing and rehab centers and in hospitals, employees who have been extremely res resistant to get the vaccine. So Governor, with these mandates, we'll all do better. And as we face this surge, which promises to be extremely challenging in the community at large and across healthcare because of these mandates will save more lives. Uh, Governor, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Santa. Thank you, and, and Governor, thank you. Thank you for the leadership, um, and thank you for the way you've led, and you've done that through partnership. And so we in the hospital industry appreciate that partnership and I think today represents just the latest example of what that partnership means. When you think about uh, the responsibilities that we in the hospital industry have, very specifically, we hold ourselves to the highest standards when it comes to the safety and well-being of our patients, of our team members, of our communities. And so it's for that reason, understanding the science and the data of this, of this virus and understanding that the vaccines represent the single most effective tool we have in the arsenal to actually drive us forward uh, and deal with the challenges associated with this pandemic that now in June, uh, we at the University of Maryland Medical System in partnership with the other academic health system in the state of Maryland, Johns Hopkins, that we together took the step of requiring vaccination for our workforce. We did so again, understanding that we have this responsibility that comes with the social compact that is healthcare. As a hospital industry, we have demonstrated time in seeking care and they have an expectation that we've done everything within our power to limit the risk and ensure that we are doing everything we can do to deliver patients back to their families in good health. So as the CEO of the medical system at the University of Maryland Medical System, I have a lot of responsibilities, none more solemn than the responsibility I have to our patients, to our team members, and to our communities to keep them safe. And so this decision, understanding the science and the data, the impact, the safety associated with vaccines and the dramatic impact vaccines have on decreasing the risk of hospitalization and death associated with COVID-19, this is a decision that we at the system came to uh, willingly. I think today the uh, mandate that you will put forward to the entire hospital industry and to the healthcare industry overall, I think is another step that takes us as the state of Maryland uh, forward and demonstrates once again that we are indeed national leaders 
uh, in the fight against COVID-19. And so on behalf of the entire healthcare industry, the hospital industry, thank you for your continued support, and we look forward to a continued partnership. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Haft. Um, I'm here today um, to, to provide some important updates also on monoclonal antibody therapy, as the governor has highlighted. Monoclonal antibody therapy is the only approved effective therapy for symptomatic COVID-19 patients who are not yet hospitalized. But the, the uses for that have now been extended, and we're excited to share that the indications for this therapy have recently been expanded to include those who are unvaccinated and or those who are, have immune incompetence, so they have immune compromise, um, who have been exposed to COVID cases uh, in order to prevent them from getting COVID. This is a much different kind of indication than what we've had before, which was only for symptomatic positive COVID patients. Um, and it will be an opportunity to change in many ways the, um, the therapeutics regarding this, uh, this important therapy. Um, this, I want to point out, is not a substitute for COVID vaccination. Everyone is still strongly encouraged to be vaccinated, as the governor and Dr. Uh, Santha and others have pointed out. Um, but the specific indications for monoclonal antibodies under the new authorization is for post-exposure prophylaxis in adult and pediatric patients, that is anyone 12 years old or, eight or older, weighing any more than 88 pounds, for post-exposure prevention um, for COVID, against COVID, in individuals who are at high risk for progression to severe disease, similar to the way it's used for, um, for treatment of those who have already been tested positive, um, including anyone who is at high risk for hospitalization or death. And again, this is mostly in, intended to prevent people from getting worse and needing hospitalization. But it's also available for those who are not fully vaccinated or those who have been vaccinated but are not expected to mount a complete immune response. That is, people who have immune deficiencies, people who are in cancer therapy, and those sorts of things. So it really is um, very broadly applicable. Um, and it has been, and uh, it's also available um, to individuals who, by virtue of being in a congregate facility, that is, in a, a long term care facility, um, or in a prison or other places where people aggregate and are at high risk in that setting vaccinated to effectively prevent them from getting bad, severe COVID, having to be hospitalized or dying. So the action item here is if you're not fully vaccinated or have an immune compromise and you know that you've had an exposure or, or, or have been contacted by a contact tracer and told that you have an exposure to someone who has COVID, you should consider using monoclonal antibody therapy. We've been administering this therapy, as the governor said, across the state since November of 2020, and have reached and, and treated over 9,200 patients to date. And with that, have avoided perhaps 450 or more hospitalizations and avoided at least 180 deaths. This therapy is safe and effective and widely available across 15 of our infusion sites, geographically placed across the state for equitable access to everyone, and also available in many emergency departments. However, here in Maryland, like almost every other state, it is still underutilized. Um, there are access points all across the region of the state, and we remain in good supply of the treatment with the capacity, if we need to, to infuse 1,000 or more people per week. Our Maryland providers, the doctors and nurses, nurse practitioners and others, have been made aware of this treatment continually over the last year um, and know about the locations and the, and the ways in which they can refer their patients for treatment. So if you test positive for COVID or are exposed to a known case of COVID-19, ask your doctor if monoclonal antibodies are right for you. This treatment can help keep patients out of the hospital and prevent worsening and death. And the good news is that the monoclonal antibody therapy is effective even against the circulating variants, including the Delta variant. More information, if you need it, can be found on the Maryland Department of Health website at covidlink.maryland.gov. If you don't happen to have a primary care provider, you can reach out through the internet to medstarhealth.org slash evisit to schedule virtual appointment. And if you don't have a doctor or the internet, 
There's a phone number that you can call. That's 410-649-6122, uh, where uh, some of our monoclonal experts uh, who work at the Convention Center uh, will be able to provide some additional resources for you. I thank you for your time and turn it back over to Governor Hogan. I'd like to thank all of our uh, experts, the gentlemen up here today, for not just being here with us, but for all of their incredible work throughout this uh, entire pandemic. And with that, I'd be happy to take some questions. Uh, there are uh, similar levels uh, uh, in the hospitals. Uh, I don't have the exact number, but it's in the 78, high 70 range. And for Dr. Sosa, for University of Maryland Medical System, since you enacted the requirement, what is your rate that you want to ask? So uh, I think as Secretary Schrader described, our, our health system was similar to uh, the entire state. Now, in the last month since we've required vaccination, we've seen a steady uptick in vaccination as we get towards that September 1st uh, deadline requirement. We'd like to see it continue to, to um, grow at a rate that's a bit faster, and so we continue to have critical conversations with those portions of our workforce. But we've seen, if we started at about that 75% vaccination rate, we've seen it steadily grow, and we expect it to continue to grow uh, significantly as we get closer to that deadline. Yes. Yes. Governor Hogan, I have a question about the booster shot. Uh, today, the White House region made it sound like the state would be bearing most of the burden of um, distributing the boosters as you did with the first and second shots. Do you anticipate reopening mass back sites to make this happen? And can you do it? You expressed frustration. Why, why do we have to wait? Can you do it sooner? Uh, so, no, we're not anticipating having to open the mass vac sites because uh, this is going to be an ongoing response like we do every year where we have to do flu shots and people that want these are going to be able to get them anywhere uh, at, their, at their local pharmacies, their local primary care for providers or any of our local health departments or any of the other facilities. So I don't think we need the same kind of volume uh, during that compressed time like we did when we built the sites. Um, we're happy that they made the announcements they did with respect to immunocompromised folks, and I think people have already been taking advantage of that and getting shots across the state for the people who are most vulnerable. Um, we, uh, we, we're a little concerned about waiting longer. Uh, we think we should be ready soon to move forward with our folks, for example, in the, in the nursing homes and people that are uh, you know, more at risk. And um, with the evidence is, evidence is there. They're saying, they've already said they're going to do it, but they're going to wait till the end of September, and um, we're, we're, our question is why? If they know that we should do it, then maybe we should start doing it. Thank you. Governor, is there any concern about uh, whether the supply will, whether you will have enough supply? Whether you will have enough supply? No, not at all. We have a, an abundance of supply right now. In fact, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking to the federal government about how many vaccines we have that we don't need and trying to, you know, make decisions about what to do with them. Because uh, we've vaccinated nearly everybody in the state and we have, you know, too many left. No, I mean, we just want to make sure that they're utilized. We've used them. We've got 80 percent. We're, I think, third best in the country on vaccinations. And uh, we want to make sure that people that, that don't have them, uh, if they need them, we will be happy to send them to them. We're not waiting for anything in particular. It's just, uh, you know, we're, we're taking measured steps as we see uh, fit. And we started with our, as we were setting our own example by mandating only uh, state workers that were dealing with congregate facilities that worked in, uh, you know, our uh, veterans' retirement home, the nursing home facility, and people that were working in the prison systems and congregate living because we thought that was an action to take. This sort of follows that by saying the hospitals and the nursing homes have been trying their best and doing a pretty good job, but we want to help make sure that gets done. But we're not at the point where we need to mandate vaccines for the, you know, broader audience, but, you know, we'll just keep watching it day to day. Anybody else? We haven't been talking about indoor mask requirements at all. We're, you know, being 80 percent vaccinated, we think uh, is a good step. And if we can get the rest of the people vaccinated, hopefully we won't have to uh, revert back to some of the things from a year ago when we didn't have vaccines. All right. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir.